welcome everybody. We are here in a new podcast episode with Josh, Healthy Living Director from uh, Scalzel Family YMCA. We are going to talk about benefits of fasting for the body, spirit, and mind. But before Josh introduces himself, thank you for being here. We appreciate you and your knowledge. And thank you for coming to the table to talk about the benefits of fasting. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So I just wanted to say before we get started, um, these, this isn't medical advice. I definitely think you should talk to your, your doctor, healthcare professional um, about whether fasting is right for you, um, if it's something you can try. Um, if you have done other diets before, then you may be familiar with some of the principles in fasting, but if it's something you're not familiar with, you may want to talk to your doctor before starting it. Thank you for the disclaimer there. And yes, we are just going to talk about like fasting through our experience, for like uh, our expertise. And then we're just trying to like, trying to understand what are like the benefits of fasting. Yeah. And you know, like fasting has been, according to history, has been like for a long, long, long time. I think like from the fifth century, and I think with the father of the medicine, Hippocrates, uh, Hippocrates, I'm pronouncing it Hippocrates. Well, uh, that one. Yep. He re actually was recommending fasting for people that had uh, health conditions. But you know, like fasting through the years, it has been recognized in uh, as a religious practice, you know, like Judaism, Catholicism, like Islam, people have been fasting for a long time. I mean, I grew up Catholic and I remember in the Holy Week, everybody was like fasting mm -hmm. like for six hours, seven hours. And then and when I became Muslim, like everybody was fasting and I have to fast for a whole month and I could see the benefits, right? Like I could see the benefits of like fasting because it make me feel better, it helped me to reconnect with myself. And then after when I got like, a, I have a rheumatoid arthritis, my doctor recommended for fasting and I have been doing it for like three, four years mm -hmm. and it has been amazing. But of course my doctor recommended and he sent me a special diet, which I try to follow. Sometimes I don't follow, but I try to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about fasting. What do you think are the benefits of it? Well, there's definitely quite a few things to keep in mind when fasting. Um, I definitely think like most people think of fasting, they think, you know, weight loss, maybe trying to restrict the amount of food that they're taking in. And I think that's a great place to start the journey if it's something you're not familiar with. Um, it's, a, it's a way of minimalizing or I guess cutting calories down throughout your day simply by just kind of skipping them mm -hmm. in a more strategic way. So it's a very interesting, I feel like right now it has become a big fad because it's new and people like new and it's, it's something that's kind of easy to adhere to. If you yes. can just say, I'm going to skip a meal, that's kind of easy for a lot of people, especially if you're really, really busy. Um, what comes to mind for me when it comes to fasting, um, it allows you to really listen to your body. Mm -hmm. um, I think when we just keep filling ourselves with any kind of food, whether it's the healthy and clean foods or the, the dirty, not so healthy foods, um, we tend not to really listen to what our body needs and wants and we kind of just keep filling it even though it may already be full. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason why I got into fasting wasn't necessarily for weight loss, but it was actually for a lot of that gut health, similar to like the rheumatoid arthritis stuff you were dealing with. I seem to have a lot of like gut inflammation that I was trying to deal with, which was from over consuming certain foods that didn't agree with me. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely think if you are somebody that doesn't digest certain foods very well, or you feel like after meals, you, you just don't feel great at all it may be worthwhile just trying to talk to a doctor to figure out if fasting would be a great way to start, you know, a journey. Maybe, I mean, an elimination diet is probably a better route when it comes to learning what foods your body can handle and what it can't handle. But to be able to listen to your body, I think it's important to cut things out so you can see what your body needs. And, you know, you do have cravings even when you're overeating. So imagine what you'll feel when you take those things out. Yeah, you mentioned something about awareness, and I think awareness of the body and what we're putting into our bodies, I think it's really important. I think it's something that I think like uh, um, like like science and then a couple of research that people have been doing, like people like medicine feel like um, have been doing our, regarding fasting, that we have to understand what are our bodies needs and what are like... What are the good things that we have to put on? Like, what are like the bad things that we have to avoid? And I think it's something that it helps us to understand 
or building better on our needs because sometimes like as you're saying we are putting a lot of things right inside inside and what if like all those things maybe give us inflammation right and even i don't know i have one of my friends that she went through cancer and her doctor the first thing that recommended it was like let's do an elimination diet let's try to see which um food is giving you is causing you inflammation and for her as a patient cancer patient it helped her a lot it helped her a lot in her journey and i think like awareness is very important to talk about i think that's really what fasting is mostly about is really bringing about the awareness of what you're what you're doing and maybe what you're not realizing that you're doing um and that's where dieting as a whole i think can be important but the idea of dieting really doesn't sound very fun because mm -hmm. you think you just got to cut things out that you shouldn't be eating and not that that's not the wrong way of thinking, but I do think it's important for, especially for an elimination type of diet, you're listening to your body. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to take out pretty much all foods and only eating very select, easily digestible foods, and then slowly kind of adding in just one thing at a time to see how your body reacts. And so with fasting, it's a, it's a, it's a definitely a different idea of what we're trying to do with that, but it's the idea of, again, listening to what, what our body's telling us. And I think we've really kind of lost that connection, um, with who we are, how we mm -hmm. feel like what, like just all the connection to, to, to our stomach, which we're all learning about is super connected to our brain, mm -hmm. which can affect our thoughts. It can mm -hmm. affect our mood. It can affect, you know, how we treat other people or how we or how we perceive the world as well. Um, so I think it's important really just so you can get a better connection with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't necessarily think counting calories is the best way for everybody, mm -hmm. but if you've never counted calories before, you might not know how many calories you're eating. So you might think you're eating, you know, just the right amount and you may be way overdoing it. You may be way underdoing it. Um, so that's where I think counting calories has a place is just to kind of understand what portions might look like mm -hmm. of what foods you should be eating. Just like I think fasting can be beneficial if you're doing it for certain reasons. Now, you can definitely go way extreme with it. Um, I know, you know, there's 24-hour fasts. Um, there's intermittent fasting. There's, I mean, juice cleanses. And those are somewhat similar to fast in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to be careful in which ones you're choosing to do, what the reason is of why you're doing it. Um, and just making sure, like, especially if you have other health conditions like diabetes, um, things where you're taking like insulin or you're watching your blood glucose or anything like that, you definitely would want to be very, very careful because mm -hmm. when you're taking other medications, it can definitely affect you. And, and so that's where, you know, you definitely need to make sure you're doing it the smart way with a doctor. Um, yes. from my personal experience, I do very well fasting mm -hmm. personally. I can go pretty much all day without eating and the longer I go, the more energy I get. So same. If I'm not, if I'm overeating, I tend to have those ups and downs and I crash, even if I'm eating not so many sugars or carbohydrates. But when I fast, I can actually make it throughout the day and I feel pretty wired at the end. So it's really interesting that, you know, you take things away and you actually feel more energy. Yeah, that yeah. happens to me. In Ramadan, I fast like, well, when I was really in Turkey, we fast like for 18 hours, almost 19. And then in Colombia, 12, but he is sometimes like 13, 14. And then because I woke up super early to have like a meal, but through the day, I have so much energy. I can talk and I don't feel like thirsty. I don't feel tired. And my husband is the contrary, right? Like he can fast, like he will feel so tired. But it's interesting how we get to know our bodies better, right? While fasting. And I have a question for you. Yeah. So in, as you as a personal training, a trainer do you recommend people to fast or have you encountered people that you train that they fast and they train at the same time or what is your point of view on on that situation? yeah no so definitely i think the to answer your first question about if i would recommend it to people i definitely i think there's a lot of ways to go about um, maybe changing your diet or listening to your body in other ways other than fasting to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, if you're somebody that, you know, you've already kind of done some fasting here and there, and you already kind of know what to expect when you're doing it, I would definitely try to help facilitate maybe the better, the better thoughts you should have while fasting. When you fast, you gotta be careful of maybe dehydration. You have to be careful that maybe your blood sugar doesn't drop too low. Yeah. Everybody's different. So I know, knowing how your body responds and reacts is probably the most important. So for people that have tried it on their own and, and they, they don't mind, you know, just trying these different fad type diets, um, 
then I would try to my best to, you know, maybe give you my own personal experience and, and maybe some tips that helped me along the way. Um, I mean, the best thing you can always do, again, is, is seeing a doctor to make sure that, you know, you're, you're a healthy person that can, can do some sort of fasting. Um, to answer your second question, mm -hmm. for training with fasting, that's going to be person to person. And the reason I say that is because for me, fasting and working out, I try to train pretty heavy, mm -hmm. like very heavy weights. And so when I'm trying to use a lot of weights, you use a lot of um, the creatine phosphagen system and you use the stored ATP, which is just the sugar that's been stored in our muscle tissue. So if I'm fasting, I might have already burned through quite a bit of that just from my body functioning normally, just doing normal daily stuff. So by the time I get to a workout, it may not be the, the best for my type of training. Mm -hmm. um, some people, however, feel like when they work out hungry, it actually almost brings us back to maybe a more ancestral type of way. Maybe when we were going to hunt for our food and we haven't had these big meals in a long time. Um, some people actually do really well fasting and training. So I think it definitely depends on how you feel and how you react with fasting. Um, for me, I, I do not like it, but I do know, you know, maybe if I wasn't training as hard, maybe if I was doing longer, slow walking type mm -hmm. exercise, that might be more beneficial and I might see maybe more fat loss, but again, it, it's going to be person to person. Yeah. Well, I do, I do personal training with you, yeah. but usually <laughs> when I come and, uh, I come like a month, twice a, a week mm -hmm. and I can't fast those days like, because I would be like, no, like I can't. It also, I think depends on time of day. I think like, especially if, if you're also just getting started in a program and, and everything is new. If you just started a new diet, you just started a new exercise routine. There's a lot changing inside your body, outside your body. Just things are happening like chemically inside mm -hmm. of us. So if you start to make all these changes all at once, you might not know what is having what reaction. Yeah. You don't know if the fasting is doing the weight loss. Mm -hmm. You don't know if the strength is doing the weight loss or the cardiovascular exercise you're doing. So personally, I wouldn't really recommend fasting unless you're kind of set in your routine and you're looking for a little bit extra. If it's coming to the calorie restriction, if you're doing fasting more for gut health type mm -hmm. reasons, you're not really trying to cut down on the amount of food you're consuming. So some people that fast may not eat in the mornings and maybe they try to eat more in the evenings to kind of make up for what they didn't get. And there's different benefits for that as well. So some people are trying to skip out on certain calories. Some people aren't trying to skip out on those calories. They're just trying to not eat during a certain window. Other people just do 24 hour fasts mm -hmm. every now and then just to kind of let everything clear out of the out of the gut kind of flush everything out so that you know hopefully the body can start to recover start and not focus on digesting all the time because i think that's another problem is we never let anything shut off our, our, our intestines are always trying to digest the food that we've gotten them our brains are always focusing mm -hmm. on our electronics Computers, and yeah. looking at our phones through the night and so i think if we can really disconnect from a lot of things and just let our bodies be at rest and really at, at rest um, we, we all probably can gain a lot of benefit to see like what our body says. Yeah, I agree. So to summarize, like there are so many benefits on like when we are talking about fasting, it could be like dependence of each person. And then for example, there's people that use it because they want to lose weight or people they want to burn some fat or be people because they want to clean their body or mm -hmm. they want to be in tune with, uh, their spirituality or because of religions, uh, I don't know, like maybe they have an idea about what fasting is, but I think like depending on each person, like it has a, a special benefits on the mind, body and the spirit, correct? Of, of course, yeah. And then I think the most important thing is like when you are going to be fasting, you have to consult with a professional in order to get like a better understanding how your fasting should be. Right. Right. And I definitely think, you know, it's important, you know, some, some doctors may advise against it. Some doctors may be more open to doing things like that. So, I mean, when it comes to some of those things, you, you, you also want to find somebody that's going to help you facilitate what you want to do to your best ability. Um, I think it's important, especially when it comes to your health, um, finding somebody that may not necessarily just disregard what you're telling them, but is a little more open and responsive because again, it's, it's a lot of your, your own advocacy of your own health. Right. And some doctors, I mean, not that I, I've just had personal experience where I had to go find a doctor that I felt fit me and, and they could 
keep me as healthy as I want to be and allow me to do the things that I want to do in my in my life. Um, so I do think it's important to maybe, I mean, we all, we all know you got to find a couple of opinions before yeah, you do anything. So I would say same thing goes for fasting if it's something you want to do. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for being here and thank you for talking with me about fasting. But before, um, we basically end up the podcast, mm -hmm. I want you to talk real quick about personal training. Why people should sign up for personal training at the Y? Well, I definitely think if you're not familiar with doing certain things, um, you know, if you want to make sure that you're safe and you're doing things and you want to make sure that there's a purpose as to why you're training, I definitely think it's important to have a trainer so that they can help guide you to reach those goals. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important that you track and measure things along your journey, whether you're with a trainer or not. Um, but just making sure that you're following the plan, you have a plan, that you're sticking to that plan. Um, and then you can measure the outcome at the end. I think that's why having a trainer is good because they have those, they can see those things happen and let you just come and do the work. Um, and it takes away the stress of you having to go and, and, and measure all that stuff yourself. Okay, great. And they just, if they are interested in signing up for personal training, they just go to the website, right? Or they can contact uh, the nearest YMCA. Yeah, definitely. You can, you can call your local branch and reach out. Um, I'm sure the front desks and welcome centers would be able to help you there. You can check out our website. Um, just, you know, go to the search bar and search train as easy as that. And a um, bunch of information on personal training should pop up. It's easy peasy, right? I and so. I totally recommend it. I think I have really had much, uh, much fun uh, doing personal training with Josh at this Casa Paradise Valley YMCA. But um, yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening.